Welcome to the next lecture about Laplace operator in two dimensions. Today we will talk about separation of variables for this operator in circular domains. So our main domain will be a disk of radius A centered at the origin with a boundary being a circle of radius A centered in the origin. We will now solve a Dirichlet problem for this operator in this domain. So this is our PDE, and now the boundary condition is as follows. The function u, which is our unknown, should be equal to a given function h on the boundary. So finding u satisfying this and that is to solve our Dirichlet problem. Since our domain has rotational symmetry, it is very convenient to pass from the Cartesian coordinates to the polar coordinates. As you remember, the relation between x and y and r theta is as follows. And when x and y runs through the range, the coordinates r and theta run as follows. r is greater than 0 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. I also mentioned, and I repeat that this is an exercise for you, to transform the Laplace equation from the Cartesian coordinates to the polar coordinates. And when you make this exercise, you will figure out that in polar coordinates, the Laplace equation looks as follows. So after transforming the problem from Cartesian coordinates to the polar coordinates, we are now looking for a function u of r and theta for r between 0 and infinity and theta between 0 and 2 pi. What about boundary condition? The boundary condition which in coordinates x, y looked like this. Say now that the function u on the circle of radius a must be equal to a given function of theta. So now we transformed our Dirichlet problem from the Cartesian coordinates to the polar coordinates. And in polar coordinates, our problem looks like this. And we try to solve this problem by our favorite method, namely by separation of variables. So we look for our u of r theta in the form of a product of function of r and function of theta. And as always, we want non-zero solution. And now when we insert these ansatz into our Laplace PDE, we'll get the following. And now by multiplying this equation by r squared and dividing it by capital R and capital theta, we'll get, of course, as usual, r prime is just dr over dr, and theta prime is just d theta over d theta, okay? So by making this operation, I rearrange this equation into this form, and I put it in this particular form, because on the left-hand side, I group the terms that only depend on r, and on the right-hand side, I group the terms that only depend on theta. So therefore, this equality is possible only if both expressions are equal to a constant, and I call this constant lambda. So this leads to two following ODEs. Let us concentrate on this ODE, in which we recognize our well-known simplest sturm liouville equation, and we know its solution. So now remember that our equation for theta is defined on a circle. So our function theta is defined on this circle, and the variable which 
parameterizes the points on the circle is an angle theta. So when theta has value 0 and when theta has value 2 pi, we want that our function capital theta will have the same value. Also, its derivative should have the same value. So we want a solution theta of this equation to satisfy periodic boundary conditions on the circle. So actually we want the theta of 0 is equal to theta of 2 pi and theta prime of 0 is theta, of theta prime of 2 pi. So we impose such periodic boundary conditions for this equation when our theta was x and our period was L, so now our theta is theta and the period is 2 pi, so we know that the solutions here are given by theta n being a n cosine n theta plus b n sine n theta and this corresponds to an eigenvalue lambda which is parameterized by non-negative integer and this lambda n is equal n squared so here is our solution to this equation which is periodic on the circle so now we have solution to this equation and we have to find the corresponding solution for the function capital R so the equation to be solved looks as follows and a person who had a course on ordinary differential equations will recognize it is an Euler equation so it has two independent solutions and when n is not equal to zero these solutions are r to the power plus minus n and when n is equal to zero this equation has as a solution constant or logarithm of r so now we are looking for our function u of r theta which is non-singular so we want that the function will be non-singular in r equals zero so therefore we have to reject the solutions r to the power minus n and logarithm r and we can write the most general solution of this equation which is non-singular at r equals zero as an n runs from zero, one, two, and through all the numbers. So taking this and that into account, we find our function u n of r theta to be r to the power n times a n cosine and theta plus b n sine and theta right so that's our solution a very simple rearrangement gives and we recognize here and here our harmonic polynomials of degree n in polar coordinates okay so summarizing we have this solution which is given for every n which is non-negative integer and now our usual approach is to consider as general solution the linear superposition of those so this results in the most general solution of Laplace PD in the polar coordinates 
and this looks like where I separated the term which doesn't depend on R from the R dependent terms therefore this sum starts now from n equal 1 because the n equal 0 term is separated so now we have to impose our Dirichlet boundary conditions which say that u at r equal a for every theta must be equal a given function h of theta so this results in a Fourier problem of finding coefficients alpha 0, alpha n and beta n for the function h of theta and using this what we know we find that alpha 0 is 1 over pi integral from 0 to pi h phi d phi alpha n is 1 over pi a to the power n integral from 0 to 2 pi h phi cosine n phi d phi and eventually beta n is 1 over pi a to the power n integral from 0 to 2 pi h of phi sine n phi d phi so these coefficients with this formula gives us a solution of the Dirichlet problem for a harmonic function on a disk of radius a centered at zero. Before passing to a particular example of solutions of this kind, I will use the information that we just obtained about the solution to obtain a very nice and useful formula for harmonic functions on a disk. It's called Poisson formula. Grouping the information from here and here together, we can write that our function u of r theta is integral over 1 over 2 pi from 0 to 2 pi h phi d phi plus 1 over pi sum from n equal 1 to infinity r over a to the power n and now there is integral from 0 to 2 pi of h of phi cosine and phi cosine and theta plus sine and phi sine and theta over d phi so these terms here with this a here comes from the coefficients here okay so now there is a tri trigonometric identity telling us that this thing is cosine n theta minus phi and we can write this long formula in a compacted form as u of r theta is equal 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi h of phi times 1 half plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity r over a to the power n cosine n theta minus phi and everything integrated over the phi so what's happened here I just group the terms and I interchange integration with summation so that's our formula for the harmonic function on a disk centered at the origin 
satisfying boundary conditions that at the circle, which is boundary of this disk, the value of this function u is h of theta. Now we can still make this formula nicer. So we will elaborate a bit on this. And for this we consider this expression that stays here under the integral. So we want to simplify this expression, which is the expression that stays here. For this, we again use complex numbers. So this is the second time that I'm applying complex tricks. And I consider a complex number z with modulus smaller than 1. And although it may seem strange, I will be now interested in the following expression. So I want to calculate this, and I do this by putting z in the polar form. So because of that, I have the draw is smaller than 1, of course, greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So now, because the modulus of z is smaller than 1, this is just a geometric series whose sum is given by a well-known expression. Therefore, I get the following. And after this, I can get that this thing here is 1 plus z to 1 minus z. And now to get rid of complex numbers in the denominator, I just write this as 1 plus z, 1 minus z bar, divided by 2, 1 minus z, 1 minus z bar. And when I do the algebra, then I will get, and now inserting z in the polar coordinates here, we will get where I have used the information that z plus z bar is 2 rho cosine alpha and z minus z bar is 2i rho sine alpha. Right? I just established that 1 half plus sum from n equal 1 to infinity of z to the power n, where z is rho e to i alpha with rho smaller than 1, is equal to 1 plus 2i rho sine alpha minus rho squared divided by 2, 1 minus 2 rho cosine alpha plus rho squared. Now, when we look at the left-hand side of this expression, it looks like 1 half plus sum of n equal 1 to infinity rho to the power n e to i n alpha. And now if we take real part of this thing, then you will get that this is precisely 1 half plus sum going from n equal 1 to infinity rho to the power n cosine n alpha. So now when I set rho to be r over a and alpha to be theta minus phi, I first observe that this is smaller than or equal 1 because r is a radial distance from the center of the disk of radius equal to a. And moreover, I can see that this formula with this setting is precisely this formula here. 
So in other words, I can write that one half plus sum from n equal one to infinity of r over a to the power n cosine n theta minus phi is equal real part of this, which is real part of that, which is real part of this. But real part of this is this expression with this term omitted. So actually this is equal 1 minus rho squared, but it's just r squared divided by a squared to 1 minus 2 r over a now cosine alpha but alpha is theta minus phi and then there is plus rho squared which is r squared over a squared simplifying we can write it in a more symmetric way a squared minus r squared by 2 a squared minus 2 r a cosine theta minus phi plus r squared. We will now use this formula to simplify our formula for the harmonic function in the disk. Remember that it was like this, 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi from the function, which was precisely this thing that stays here. And this thing that stays here is equal to that. So we can pull out 2 here and write it as a squared minus r squared divided by a squared minus 2r a cosine theta minus phi plus r squared. Everything multiplied by h of phi and integrated over d phi. So our long formula for a harmonic function in the disk, which involved summation from zero to infinity, now becomes quite simple, and it results in a simple integration of a function h, which is the value of a harmonic function on the boundary, with some universal function of four arguments, r, theta, and phi, and a, and if we just integrate h with this universal function, we'll get the value of our harmonic function in the disk. So this four argument function of r, theta, a, and phi is called the kernel for the harmonic functions satisfying Dirichlet conditions on the disk. And this kernel function k is function of r, theta, a, and phi is equal to a squared minus r squared, a squared minus 2r a cosine theta minus phi plus r squared. And using this kernel, we can write the value of a harmonic function within the disk as 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi from the kernel multiplied by the value of the harmonic function on the boundary and integrated over the phi. Let's summarize this in a theorem. The solution for the Dirichlet problem for the Laplace equation on a disk BA is given in polar coordinates by the formula here, which is called Poisson formula. Where h of phi is the value of the harmonic function on the boundary. The function k of r, theta, a, and phi being a squared minus r squared 
a square minus 2a cosine theta minus phi plus r squared is called Poisson kernel of the problem. And in terms of the Poisson kernel, the formula for the harmonic function reads okay, so it is a very useful formula. If you have the value of the function on the boundary of a disk, you simply have to integrate it with some universal function k, which is called Poisson kernel, and by integration you will get a value of the harmonic function in any point in the disk. Very quick corollary from this theorem is the mean value theorem. And this says that the value of a harmonic function in the center of the disk is equal to the mean value of this function on the boundary of the disk. So the proof of this theorem is very easy if we use Poisson formula because we are interested in the value of the function at r equals 0 with whatever theta because when r is equal 0 theta doesn't matter and then we just get from the Poisson formula that is 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi and we have to put r equal 0 everywhere so what we get is just this and is precisely the mean value of the function h of theta over the circle so that's the proof let us now pass to a particular example of a Dirichlet problem for the Laplace operator in the circular region as I promised at the beginning of this lecture so in this promised example, we'll be using the formula here. We consider Laplace equation on a disk of radius 1 and we want to find a harmonic function that on a circle of radius 1 is such that h of x y is equal to y squared okay so in the cartesian coordinates this boundary condition tells us that h of 1 theta must be equal y squared but when we write it in the polar coordinates it means this because r is equal 1 and y is equal to r sine theta. So this boundary condition h1 theta is simply 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta and therefore <coughs> our decomposition here is very simple alpha 0 is equal 1 and alpha 2 is equal minus 1 half whereas our other alpha n is equal 0 and for n non equal 2 and all beta n's are equal 0 right so in other words our solution for u of r theta looks like one-half minus one-half r squared cosine to theta, right? But this is equal one-half one minus r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta so when we go back to the Cartesian coordinates, we get 1 minus x squared plus y squared. We can write it also as 1 half 1 minus x squared minus y squared plus y squared. And then it is very visible that 
on the circle x squared plus y squared equal 1, the value of this function, which now is a function of x of y, is precisely y squared. So the solution to this problem is given by classical functions. This completes our example. In the next example, I will solve the Dirichlet problem for the two-dimensional Laplace equation on a piece of cake domain. So what is a piece of cake domain? It is a part of a disk of radius a defined in polar coordinates by the following equation. We can draw a picture. just like a piece of cake. So this will be our domain. What will be the PDE? As before, the Laplace equation, which in polar coordinates looks like this. And what will be the boundary conditions? We'll consider Dirichlet boundary conditions. So at the boundary, which is the piece of the circle here, the function u of a and theta is supposed to be equal to a given function of theta. And at the lateral boundaries of the cake, the function u is supposed to be zero. So informally, we want that u of a for any theta is a given function h of theta for theta between 2 pi and 0 and u of r at 0 and u of r at gamma is supposed to be 0 for every r from 0 to a. So this is our PDE, these are our boundary conditions, and we want to find function u of r and theta in the interior of this piece of cake. So for r between 0 and a, and theta between 0 and gamma. So if you just take u of r of theta as r of r and theta of theta, we will get usual separation as in the circular region. And the equation for theta to be theta double prime plus lambda theta is equal to 0. But now we have these boundary conditions which tells us that the solution to this equation which must be sine square root of lambda theta equals 0 because at small theta equals 0 the solution must be equal to 0. But now the other condition that sine of square root of lambda gamma must be zero tells us that lambda must be equal to n squared pi squared divided by gamma squared. And the solutions corresponding to this lambda n are theta n, which are just sines of n pi divided by gamma theta. And here n runs from 1 to 3 and so on. So this is the solution of this equation which satisfies the imposed boundary conditions. And now we have to solve this equation for a given lambda. This equation is again Euler equation, but now lambda is different 
then in the full circle or full disk therefore the solution here is r to the power plus minus n pi gamma and if we just want to choose solutions that are regular at r equals zero then we have to exclude solutions with the minus sign phi here and un of r theta is therefore a n r to the power n pi divided by gamma sine n pi divided by gamma of theta so this is the solution of this equation with these boundary conditions and now because our PDE and boundary conditions are linear in U, then we can superpose these primitive solutions, obtaining as the most general solution in this class a solution in terms of a series. Now we have to use the last boundary condition corresponding to the value of the obtained function U at, at the edge of the cake which is just piece of a circle so we want that h of theta is equal to u of a of theta and then it is equal to sum from n equal 1 to infinity of alpha n a to the power n pi divided by gamma sine n pi divided by gamma theta and using the orthogonality of function signs we get that coefficients alpha n are equal to so these two expressions give us a solution to the Dirichlet problem on this piece of cake and the Dirichlet problem is given by the requirement that function u at this part of the circle satisfies this and at this part is vanishing no big deal but now let us see what's going on when gamma is equal to 2 pi remark consider the case where gamma is equal to pi right so then the this formulae reduced to the following ones that u of r theta is equal to sum from n equal 1 to infinity alpha n r to power n half sine n half theta with alpha n's being integrals from a to the minus n half divided by pi and now integral from 0 to 2 pi h of phi sine n of phi divided by 2 d phi so that's the solution of this Dirichlet problem on a piece of cake which is actually an entire cake right so it is a solution of this Dirichlet problem on an entire disk of radius a but this solution is very different than the solution we obtained for the Dirichlet problem for the Laplace equation on an entire disk of radius a where we had boundary conditions that the harmonic function on the circle bounding the disk should be equal to a given function h of theta recall that there we had u of r theta with coefficients alpha n and beta n given by this is a very different expansion 
even if we forget about these coefficients, look that here the R dependence is such that only integer powers of R appear, whereas here we have that half integer powers appear. So these are very different solutions. And this one is a solution about harmonic function on the disk of radius A, which on the boundary has value of its harmonic function equal to h of theta. And this one is also a solution for a harmonic function on a disk of radius A, which at the boundary has a given function h of theta. But this solution and this solution cannot be the same. We have these two different formulae. Why? Aha! Because in this problem we have here a distinguished interval which corresponds to theta equals 0 and theta equal to pi. And in this problem, apart from the boundary conditions at the circle, which are the same as here, we have additional requirement that the function u at this interval vanishes. So u is 0 here. Whereas in this case, we don't have such interval distinguished because we imposed periodic boundary conditions. So this is a solution with periodic boundary conditions and it's a solution with boundary conditions that on this half interval require that the harmonic function must be zero. So it's why they are different. As the last topic in this entire series of lectures, we'll consider Poisson equation on a disk. So let's write Poisson equation which is just inhomogeneous Laplace equation with inhomogeneity given by a function f of x, y. And we want that this equation will be satisfied on a disk BA. So because we are in a circular region, it's much better to consider this equation in polar coordinates, which look like this. And now the inhomogeneity is given in terms of a function f of r and theta, we want function u of r and theta to be solution to this equation in the region of the disk, namely when r is between 0 and a and theta belongs to the interval 0 to pi. Right? We want that our solution satisfies Dirichlet boundary conditions. So we want that at the boundary of the disk, which is the circle, the function u satisfies u of a of theta is equal to a given function h of theta. And now, if we recall the situation of Laplace equation on such a disk, then we noticed there that the dependence of theta was governed by orthogonal functions which were sine and theta and cosine and theta. So we can now apply our usual procedure of solving inhomogeneous equations, knowing the solutions of the homogeneous equation, that the solution should also be kind of power series of these functions, but now is the coefficient then depend on r. So we postulate a solution u of r theta in the form. Because we postulate solution like this, we also have to decompose the inhomogeneity into the orthogonal set of functions of sines and cosines. So then f of r theta must be equal to delta 0 of r divided by 2 plus 
the similar infinite sum as in u of r theta. And now when we insert this and that into our Poisson PDE, we'll get relations for these unknown functions fn and gn. These equations look as follows. So what we have here is a system of the coupled inhomogeneous Euler equations, each for each own function f of n or g of n. And each of these equations have inhomogeneity given either by the function delta n or by the function epsilon n that stays in the inhomogeneity. So now, since fn and gn satisfy inhomogeneous Euler equations, so if we look for regular fn's at zero, then they should be of the form and the same with gn's. Here, these last two terms are particular solutions of inhomogeneous Euler equations like this for f twiddle n and this for g twiddle n. These are particular solutions of the inhomogeneous Euler equations with respective inhomogeneity delta n or epsilon n. So this is essentially all what I can say because now you can try to find these guys for particular f of r of thetas. I think that I stop this series of lectures here. I should thank everybody that was listening to this long, long, long story. Thank you very much.